Hi, I'm Nick from Sundance and I'm on the Juno NC895. This model they call the Weekender versus the 895 Sport, which we did a different video on, uh, which I'd encourage you to check that one out too. There's some key differences between the models that we'll talk about. As part of our virtual boat show series, we're gonna take a detailed look at this boat inside and out. We're gonna run it, do some performance testing later, and uh, I'm gonna show you some of the reasons why this is one of our, our best selling models. Before we do the in-depth walkthrough, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough with you and go over some of the highlights. And then if you wanna stick around, we'll learn a lot more about the boat. It has twin 200 horsepower Yamaha outboards. This boat uh, has the factory U-shaped seating and sun pad arrangement. So this converts to a sun pad. We have a galley on the starboard side with a gas stove and a sink. To the port side, we have a dinette that converts to a berth. The helm station is very well equipped and has side door access, access to the uh, walk around, so easy access to the cockpit and the bow and the cleat. And then down below, we have two staterooms and a head. The forward stateroom is the larger of the two. This is unique in a 28 foot boat. It has a closing door and full stand up headroom in the second and smaller of the two staterooms. To the starboard side, we have the head, uh, which we'll take a closer look at in the in-depth walkthrough. Starting in the back of the boat, we have teak, real teak on the swim platforms, uh, one on each side. We have a boarding ladder here for swimming, climbing back up on the boat. This Velcro strap keeps it together when it's not deployed. And then the two, the twin 200 horsepower Yamaha outboards. We'll talk more about these and listen to how quiet they are uh, when we do the performance testing. There's a fuel fill right here labeled diesel. That is of course not for the mains, but that's for the diesel furnace. This boat was ordered with the factory diesel furnace option and that's the fuel fill for those. There's a cockpit shower right here for rinsing off after swimming. And then the boarding gate locks in the open and closed positions. On the starboard side of the boat, we have this side door for easier boarding if the boat's side tied like it is. Opens up like that. You can also see the starboard side gas fill is right there. Uh, there's one on the port side. It has two tanks, uh, one on each side. And then right here is the propane bottle for the gas stove. The cockpit of this 895 is configured with the U-shaped seating arrangement. That gives us an extra seat up here as opposed to the L-shaped, which is just the aft and the port side seats. So it converts to a sun pad. It also, the, the aft seat slides so that the motors can trim up and down out of the water. There's a spring-loaded barrel bolt. There's actually two on this side and one on the port side pull out these two cushions. And then lock the seat back down in the forward position. So the reason they do it that way with sliding the seat forward to trim the motors up is to keep the boat compact. It's a 28 foot boat. You can see to have the cockpit this big and be able to trim the motors up and not move the seat, you'd have to really add a couple feet to the length of the boat. So if it's being trailered or just for the purposes of getting it in a slip, um, that keeps the boat just a little bit more compact. Easy as that. To convert the U-shaped seating arrangement into the sun pad is pretty easy. First thing, we just pull out the table and pull out this leg. There's 
storage all around. So there's a lot of storage in this seat under here. There's a lot of good storage in there and there's storage in this one too. To get at those, of course, if you just pull these straps, makes it a lot easier. To fill this in, you just take this bar and put it in that insert in the fiberglass on both sides. It's very secure. And then this piece slides in here. And then the cushions fill in. One of the benefits of having outboards is all the storage that it opens up under the cockpit. So we're gonna take a look at that. First, we just remove this table. You don't have to, but it limits, uh, limits how far it'll open if you don't remove the table. Unlock this latch here, a little bit of pressure and it'll turn. And then it's on a couple of gas shocks so it supports itself up. Down under the cockpit, there's access to the fuel tanks, there's access to some equipment, and there's a lot of room for storage. First of all, the fuel tanks are port and starboard. So one's right behind me and one's right here. There are these fire ports where you can stick a fire extinguisher in there to put out a fire if there ever was one in there. Access hatches. So here's the tank, it's an aluminum tank. And then some of the tank information on a placard there. There's also access to a shutoff valve in there, but you don't have to come down here to engage the shutoff valve. There's a stainless steel cable run to the valve from the helm and cable pulls that we'll take a look at when we're looking at the helm. So you can shut off the fuel flow from the helm station. There's also access to the fuel line, the fill line coming from the deck fill to the tank for service, which again is not something that you would have to access very often, if ever. Through this hatch, we have access to the diesel tank for the diesel furnace. It's another aluminum tank. What we can see, there's the fill and then the, the feed line going to the diesel furnace, the sender, which goes up to a gauge up by the diesel furnace control pad to tell us how much fuel is in the tank. And then on this side, we have some batteries. Under me, there's two more hatches that if we remove, we'll have bilge access um, and access to the Garmin sender for the Garmin navigation display up front. And then forward, there's a lot of storage possibilities down below and then the diesel furnace is installed. It's mounted up here. There's also these access hatches on the top of the tanks, one on each side to access the fuel tank senders for the mains. The final thing uh, in the cockpit is this manual bilge pump and the handle stores right there. This boat is equipped with the factory reed mat option uh, in both the cockpit and the interior, which is just perfectly cut to all the shapes of the boat, snaps in, easy in out. Under the reed mat in the cockpit, is white non-skid and in the interior a nice uh, laminate wood flooring. The side deck on the 895 Weekender which is this boat is not quite as wide or as deep as on the 895 Sport which was the subject of a different video that we did but the trade-off is that you get a little bit more room inside the boat inside the cabin on the Weekender than you do on the Sport and it's still as you can see a really nice wide and deep side deck. It's just not quite as wide or deep as the 895 Sport. On the bow of the 895, we have these cushions here, and this is, what this is, is a seat. So, it pops up just like that. All the way forward on the bow is access to the chain locker and windlass. So here's the wired remote for, for the windlass. It goes in this cradle right here. And this is a safety 
cable. So if something, if the windlass loosens up underway, uh, the anchor won't deploy. And then access to the chain and road down there. If you've seen the 895 Sport, which this isn't, this is the Weekender, or watched our video on the 895 Sport, you'll see that this is quite a bit different up in the bow. The 895 Weekender, which is this model, does not have the dinette and seating built into the bow. The trade-off is more room in the stateroom inside of this boat. So this has more of the conventional bow that you're used to seeing on most boats and a lot of room in that stateroom down below. On the hard top of the 895, this boat we've ordered with the factory roof rack option. Uh, this is actually a new option for a while. We were installing roof racks at the dealership. Um, but this, so this is a, a new option with the factory stainless roof rack. And they did a good job here. They, they chose a diameter of tube that's large enough so that some of the aftermarket accessories like those Yakima kayak cradles there will clamp onto this tube. Those won't clamp down tight enough for some smaller diameter tubes, but this one they will. You can see the sliding, manually sliding roof hatches, which are you can open from the inside. Uh, this boat has the spotlight, horn. The horn is now an option. That wasn't for a while. And the VHF antenna and anchor light. As we move inside the boat, we have access to the main battery switches here for the house bank, the engine bank, and a breaker for the windlass. The door is very wide and it locks in the open position, top and bottom, so it won't move around when you're out on the water. And it slides nice and easy. Just inside into starboard, we have the galley. If we lift this hatch, there's a nice two burner propane cooktop. That propane tank is just outside under the starboard side deck. Sink, two cup holders, and then some storage in the cabinet here. Some more storage there and access to the microwave. And then the fridge. To port, we have this dinette, which converts to a berth. And then over here, we have the diesel furnace uh, thermostat and controller and a fuel gauge for the diesel tank. The dinette seats four. This seat will flip directions for forward seating when you're cruising. And the tabletop slides. You need to slide it into the aft position to flip this seat around. And then to convert this to the berth, pull that out, remove the table leg. You can see these barrel bolts correspond to the holes. So that locks into position. And then you can put the cushion down and we have a berth. The forward stateroom is the larger of the two staterooms. The berth has storage underneath it. There's also access to the bow thruster through here. So we have the bow thruster battery and bow thruster access right there. And Janot put a door for accessing this storage compartment so that you don't necessarily, if somebody's in the berth or the bed's made, you don't have to lift it to get in there. There's also, to make the bed bigger, you slide this back and there's an extra cushion that fits perfectly in that closet. So with the filler cushion in here, the berth is quite large, plenty of room for two adults. Without the filler cushion in, the berth is a little shorter, but it still works. It's still, still comfortable. So if you're not super tall, you could probably get by with not using the filler cushion, which just gives you a little bit more room to move around in the stateroom. To the port side, there's a nice hanging locker closet. We have some outlets, 
And then storage all around. This is an option, um, but one that we always order our boats with so that you have quite a bit more storage up above. There's a skylight here that's a fixed pane of glass and then an opening hatch here, which I'm not going to open because it's a little wet. It's been raining. Um, the skylight has a shade for privacy and then there's curtains for to cover up the whole windows, which are really nice. I'm standing in the port side stateroom, which has standing headroom and a closing door. There's a skylight here and a privacy curtain to cover the skylight. We have storage here, an outlet up there, light switch here, opening window here for ventilation. And then of course the whole window, there's a curtain on a track for privacy covers the whole window. The berth in the port side stateroom here is actually very large. I've got my feet all the way at the end and I have plenty of room. I'm about 5'9". As you can see, there's, there's more than enough room for two people in here. There's good lighting. There's a strip light here. There's a light here. There's a strip, strip light up top. It's all LED. There's a diesel furnace vent there. Of course, it exhausts outside, but it blows heat inside. There's storage here. Through this panel here, we have access to the main AC breakers. Um, so that's AC versus DC power. Uh, I'm not referring to air conditioning, which this boat is not equipped with. We order the boats normally with no air conditioning, but with a diesel furnace instead. Um, because we don't have air conditioning, although the boat is set up for two incoming shore power lines, it does not have a line to. There's only one shore power plug at the back of the transom, and that is shore one. And then we have AC voltage, uh, so incoming voltage from the dock on that voltmeter there. Behind this final panel, the largest panel in the stateroom, the water heater, the holding tank. So that's that kind of blue green tank back there. The domestic water pump is over there. And then there's also the uh, holding tank discharge valve right there. Um, the way that Juno does these is, is kind of unique. Instead of using a macerator pump to discharge the holding tank, it just gravity feeds straight through the bottom of the boat. Um, and there's a valve to do that, which of course you would only want to do if you were far enough offshore uh, in an area where that's legally allowed. We're in the head, it's on the starboard side. It's spacious. There's this uh, cover over the toilet so that you can use this as a seat while you're showering in here. And then there's this bungee to keep it up when you're not using it for that. And you can see the whole windows. We have whole windows in the head, but of course there's a privacy curtain. And then there's this opening window here and storage in the cabinet. Also the TP holder. We have a mirror here, hand towel ring here, and a towel hook there. There's a catch on the back of the door so you can kind of lock it, semi-lock it in the open position so it won't bang around when you're underway. Then you just pull it to release. There's another door in the cabinet right here, which gives us access to the uh, water intake for the head. So there's a, a through hole with a seacock on it, so you can close that valve if you need to. The sink pulls out, and this actually is the shower head. In the floor of the head, there's this drain. That's the shower drain. It drains to a pump under the floor, which we'll take a look at in a minute, that we turn on here. So that's for pumping the water out of the, the head floor or the shower floor. And then behind this panel, this is access to the back of the helm. So this is the back of the Garmin navigation screen, the Yamaha display, the helm pump right here, um, some 12 volt fuses here. So these are easy to access, easy to check and replace. Between the head and the port side stateroom under the floor, if we pull up the reed mat, we have access to this panel that comes out and there's the uh, windshield washer fluid reservoir. There's a bilge pump and there's the sump for the shower, which we uh, turned on when we were in the shower earlier.
we're out on the water now. We're going to do some performance testing with the 895, and we're going to talk about the helm station. So we have a we have Garmin Navigation Electronics. So a chart plotter, depth sounder, fish finder. That's what we've got on the screen now. You can add uh, radar plugs into this. The Garmin radar, pretty easy to add. The Yamaha screen. So this gives us engine information, engine RPMs, coolant temperature, oil pressure, fuel level. So we've got two full tanks of fuel. Uh, we also have a full water tank and a full diesel tank for the diesel furnace. Conveniently placed cup holder and the Fusion stereo. So that has Bluetooth built in and there's Fusion speakers around the boat hooked up to that. Wipers, which came in handy, handy a minute ago, it was raining. Bow thruster here, so to turn on the bow thruster, we press and hold, and it beeps, and you can hear the relays turn on down on the actual thruster. To turn it off, you press the button again. Down here a little lower, there is this first switch with the red lockout turns on the propane gas. I'm gonna leave that off. And then these are just some miscellaneous 12 volt switches. So we've got nav lights and anchor light, bilge pump overrides. So the bilge pumps are on automatic sensors, but if for whatever reason you need to manually override those, you can just press and hold these and it'll turn on the bilge pump or pumps. And then this switch turns the navigation electronics off and on. So if I turn that off, the Garmin screen goes out, turn it back on, it'll come back up. Garmin VHF. Clear, turns off that alarm. I think it's, uh, yeah, it wants, to, it wants us to enter an MMSI number, which uh, usually we do shortly before delivery. Uh, water pump switch here turns on the domestic water pump. The second switch from the right is the windshield washer switch, so you can press that here, the pump run. Uh, and then the far right is the windlass control. So there's a wired remote uh, up in the anchor locker where you can control the windlass anchor up down. And then there's also the control here. And then uh, trim tabs right here to adjust the trim of the boat. And if the boat's loaded heavily on one side or the other, you might be using the second stateroom for storage and have extra weight on the port side, uh, the trim tabs will allow you to level the boat out uh, no matter how it's loaded. This, this bar here, this is new. I haven't noticed this before. They've added that so that you don't accidentally bump these switches with your knee. And then the Yamaha ignition here, so key off on and then start stop, one for both, one for each motor and the controls, the Yamaha controls here trim for the uh, outboards up down here and the I think I mentioned this before when it alarmed but we have a Garmin VHF here easy to access for boat-to-boat -boat communication communication with the Coast Guard communication with bridges and then spotlight control here so on and you can hear it I can hear it moving control the direction of the spotlight which is mounted right about up there. A carbon monoxide detector there. And then the, the two hatches, these manual hatches. There's a bug screen slides out from that side and a sunshade. And to open these, just like that. And then of course, the side door which is really on a nice day, uh, or, or any day really, is great for ventilation. And that'll lock open so it doesn't move around when you're running. A 12 volt plug and two USB plugs right here for charging devices. Over to the starboard side of the helm seat are the two fuel shutoffs. So there's, a, there's two handles that you can pull, which will pull the cable that goes down to the valves on the fuel tanks to shut off the fuel flow uh, right at the tanks. And then the seat has this flip down bolster. So you can stand at the helm, which I like to do. But it's got great visibility when standing. Or you can flip it down and have a good seat. And it's, it's on a sliding base. So you can slide it forward and backward.
run the boat up to speed, record our speeds going into the current and with the current, and then we'll take the average of the two, and that'll give us our, our accurate speed through the water. So these boats, um, they run very level, naturally. Um, oftentimes, they don't need trim tab adjustment. Uh, all, all I've done is brought the boat up on plane, and it naturally is just running perfectly flat. The attitude is also just right. I mean, it, it's, it, you maintain excellent visibility, including while the boat is climbing out of the water and getting on plane. I never lost forward visibility due to bow rise or anything like that. For the performance testing, uh, wide open throttle is about 6,000 RPMs. Right now, we're, we've got the boat about 4,000 RPMs. So we'll try 4, 45, 5, 55, and 6,000 RPMs. Take speed measurements at, at, at each interval. So at 4,000, our GPS speed is 23.7 miles per hour. Our pitot tube speed, coming from the Yamahas, is 26 miles per hour. So in theory, that should be our uh, our speed through the water. But we'll compare it to the GPS speed measurements upstream, downstream, and uh, we'll see if that's true. Our fuel economy, according to the Yamaha display is uh, 1.6 miles per gallon and 14.9 gallons per hour. Okay, we're at 4,500 RPMs. Our GPS speed into the current is 29 miles per hour. Our pitot tube speed is 31 miles per hour. Fuel economy is 1.6 miles per gallon. Fuel flow is 17.5 gallons per hour. RPMs. Our GPS speed is 33.4 miles per hour. Pitot tubes 35 miles per hour. 1.4 miles per gallon and 23.5 gallons per hour. 5,500 RPMs. 37.3, 37.4 miles per hour GPS. 39 miles per hour through the pitot tube, 1.2 miles per gallon, and 32.8 gallons per hour. Wide open throttle is 6,000 RPMs. GPS speed is 40.5 miles per hour into the current. Uh, pitot tube speed is 43 miles per hour, 0.9 miles per gallon, and 40.5 gallons per hour. Okay, downstream now, 4,000 RPMs. GPS speed is 26.7, 26.5 miles per hour. Uh, pitot tube speed is 25 miles per hour. And fuel economy, uh, 1.6 miles per gallon, 14.1 gallons per hour. 4,500 RPMs. GPS speed is 32.5 miles per hour. Engine pitot tube speed is 31 miles per hour, 1.6 miles per gallon, and 17.5 gallons per hour. 5,000 RPMs. GPS speed is 36.8, 37 miles per hour. Pitot tube speed is 35 miles per hour. 1.4 miles per gallon and 24.4 gallons per hour. 5,500 RPMs, uh, 40.4 miles per hour, 40.6, 40.7 miles per hour GPS speed. 39 miles per hour. 